Good evening, everybody. Welcome to something new. We're starting here at Crossroads every Wednesday night. I'm right here in my office. Actually, we're going to do this every Wednesday night throughout this month, and eventually we're going to go to every weekday night with other people other than me. I just thought it'd be really good to give us a little devotional. We've got some stuff in the morning that gives us a good worship push off to the day for those of us who really have a heart for worship. We want to do something as well at night for those of us who maybe have more of a heart for theology, maybe a little bit more heart for some of the intellectual aspects of our faith to just root us in truths of God as we, as we end our day. So this is one that's been hitting on me today. It's from the book of Ephesians chapter one. This is my time with God this morning, or part of my time with God. Rich, rich, rich verbiage. I don't know if you realize it or not, but our world majors on making you and I feel poor. In many ways, you think about it, the way the economy of America works is for you and I to feel poor. If we feel like we don't have something, then we have a yearning, so I have to buy something. If we feel like we're not measuring up to somebody, then maybe we will find a better picture and put it on social media to show people that we're measuring up and it will drive more traffic to social media so Facebook can have more ads. Uh, America does well if you and I feel poor. I don't know if you've ever thought about it that way, but there's a need to feel discontented. And this can be actually very dangerous spiritually. The first chapter of Ephesians comes exactly against that because it says if you are in Christ, if you have received Christ in your life, you are not poor. You are rich. If you're with somebody right now, just turn to them and say, you are rich. That's right, you. I tell you, you're rich. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, it says that our Lord Jesus Christ has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. One of the ways to meditate on a verse is to say the same verse, or say the same sentence again, over and over again, but emphasize different words. So something that he has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. He has blessed us, or he's blessed us in Christ, in Christ, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. It's Christ where our blessings come from, not our stick to itiveness not our own giftedness, it is in Christ. He is blessed in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. He's blessed with every, he's, he's not holding out on you. You have every, what? Every spiritual blessing. Do you feel rich when you have a spiritual blessing? Our world would tell us you're not rich if you have a spiritual blessing. That's a cop-out. You're not rich if you have another house. You're not rich if you have a, Laura Bradley bag. I don't know, is Laura Bradley still hot for those who are women? I don't know, it was hot 10 years ago. I never understood the stupid quilt bags. God awful ridiculous. But nonetheless, you're only rich if you have that thing or if you have iPhone X or something like that. How about being spiritually rich for knowing that how you walk is the way God wants you to walk? It makes you rich. You don't have a Second thought about how you're living your life. How about, how about the rich blessing, the rich spiritual blessing that you don't have to impress God anymore. When you're in poverty, you gotta strive to get out of it. But when you already have every spiritual blessing, you don't have to impress God anymore. You wanna serve God, we wanna work with God's plan, but we are not compelled to do something so that he blesses us because we're already spiritually rich because he has received us. Christ has blessed, blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, in the heavenly places. We may not be grabbing this right here and right now, but it exists for real. It's in the heavenly places. It is awaiting for us. And the verse continues, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. He predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. This is a big debate that people in theological circles love doing. What does it mean to be predestined? Does God predestine some people to heaven and he predestines others to go to hell? What does it mean to be predestined? Or some people would look at being predestined, they would see that as Calvinism, John Calvinism led a theological school that was around that. 
uh, John, who believed in predestination, which by the way, I don't ever, ever did, um, did you ever hear what the Calvinist said once he, once he hit his thumb with a hammer? He said, thank God that's over. You know, predestined is gonna happen. Anyway, <laughs> we, we can really get into this whole, is it predestined? Is it, I, I, personally, I'm not excited about the predestined debate. I, I have convictions on it, or at least have, used to have a lot stronger convictions, but here's what I know, adoption. All of us, when we come into the family of God, we are adopted into the family of God. And what child chooses to be adopted into a family? The family chooses to adopt the child. Your heavenly father chose to adopt you. Don't get hung up on predestination. Did I have a chance? Did I not have a chance? I just want you to see this spiritual blessing. God chose you. You didn't figure it out because you're smarter than the next guy. You didn't come to the end of your rope and you had, you had no other way to get there. You came to God because he gave you the mind to seek and find him. You came to the end of your rope because that was God's way of getting you to him because he wanted to adopt you. Isn't that amazing? You have to feel like God looked at you at all the babies in the ward. And he said, that one. I want that one. And that's how important you are him. He's chosen you. He's picked you out. He's adopted you in the family. There's other people around you who are not adopted. You are. You're special. You're special because God adopted you. Now, people around you and I, we don't know who's adopted or not. They may be marked for adoption. They just haven't gotten their adoption papers yet. So we, we never give up on our friends. And we want to assume and pray and work to every single one of our neighbors and friends that they will get adopted into the family of God and know the spiritual blessings that we have. But irrespective of what they do or don't do, you need to know that your, your dad, he, he chose you. He's ecstatic that, he's in your, that, um, that you're in his family. Right, let's, let's go through one more verse. I'm just going through this verse by verse. Number, verse number six. To the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. That's an intense one. Blessed us in the beloved. My version there, the beloved is capitalized, capital B. Blessed us in the beloved means blessed us in Christ. Jesus is the beloved of God, the capital B, the ultimate divine God. In him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses according to, the, here it is, watch it, the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us. You know, God gives us out of his grace richly. He doesn't give us just enough grace to get to heaven. He gives us richly of graces. You having the ability to breathe right now, that's of the grace of God. A lot of people can't breathe right now. You right now, being born in America, that's of the very grace of God, instead of being born someplace else in the world where you wouldn't have a chance for food and sustenance the way you have right now. You having any friends, that's the grace of God. You might say, man, I'm so thankful I have a church that makes God understandable for me. That's the grace of God. You being able to have a heartbeat that's beating, whatever it is, 60 beats a second, 70 beats, a, that's God. You don't think about that at all. That just keeps going. He richly provides you with blessings richly that he can, what's the word? Lavish on you. Do, you. do you feel that? Do you feel that God blesses you abundantly? I think if you don't feel that God blesses you abundantly, it goes back to the, where we started our devotional. It goes back to the belief of this world making us feel like we're in poverty. This world convincing us that we don't have and that we're, hold, we're being held out on. If we reorient our heart and life to the values of God, you might find that you're pretty stinking rich. You might not have the car that you want to have, but you have the God that you need to have. You might not have the savings that the financial planner is telling you to have, but you have an inheritance that's laid up for you in heaven. You don't have your hands on your inheritance right now, but there is an inheritance waiting for you because God has lavished you with grace. You're in relation with it, and there is an inheritance coming that will make this 75 years on earth just like pfft. some people who appear rich right now, 
their 75 years are going to be over like that. And I'm telling you, they're going to be in abject eternal poverty. But those of us who are in Christ, who are blessed with every spiritual blessing, have, as this chapter talks about, an inheritance that comes from the richness of grace that God lavished on us. He gives us hints of this inheritance right now that enables us to have a life that works. But the full inheritance is just around the corner. Keep having an eternal perspective. Don't be deluded by this world and the things of this world. Be about the rich, spiritual, lavish blessings of God, which comes in the form of the Christ, our beloved. Let me pray for us tonight. Uh, Father, I thank you for being generous. I ask forgiveness for not believing you're generous. I ask for forgiveness for for being bitter that someone gets something and I don't get something. I want my heart oriented towards your truth. And that truth is that I'm rich. All of us are rich. Help us to feel that and, uh, and abide in your lavish love today and as we sleep and tomorrow. And I pray these things according to the name of Jesus. Amen.